welcome to Sozo Lounge. Today I'm going to teach you how to fix tears in fabric. Now you probably thought that once you tore your favorite pair of shorts or skirt or dress, you either had to send it out to a tailor to do some kind of magic and get it back to you all fixed, or you just had to throw it out. I'm going to show you two different ways to fix tears in fabric. The first way is using iron-on mending tape or fabric from Dritz. Now, Singer also makes this. It's available in your local fabric store or on Amazon. And this is gonna be the iron-on, no-sew, super fast method. And that's gonna be the best option if you have a cotton garment and you need a quick fix and you don't wanna hand sew. The other option is going to be using iron-in knit interfacing with a hand sewing combination. So we're gonna use the interfacing to stabilize the fabric and we're gonna do a little hand stitching to make it all come together. Now, one thing to remember is when you are using the iron-on method, you have to, your fabric has to be able to handle high heat. So depending on the fiber content, um, you may not be able to use this method. I'm gonna show you how to do this using my skirt, which is 100% cotton. After I made it, and the first time I wore it, I realized there was a hole in the fabric um, on the center front. Now, I didn't have this happen when I was wearing it, but it was probably there and I just didn't notice when I cut out the fabric. The other method with the interfacing, I'm gonna show you on this dress. Um, that my sister has and she stepped on the hem with her heel and tore a hole in it. I'm not sure what the fiber content of this dress is. It feels like it's some kind of a blend, maybe a cotton poly or a rayon poly blend. It's got a little shine to it and it feels kind of slick. So we cannot use the iron-in method with this because I don't want to melt the fabric and make it even worse. And let's go in for a closer look. This is a close-up of the Dritz Iron-On Mending Tape, which comes in a band, kind of ribbon-like. Um, it's 64 inches long and it's an inch and a quarter wide. And then this is fabric, which is gonna be a six by 13 piece. So you can cut it to any kind of strange shaped holes or tears. Now, this is made by Dritz. As I said earlier, Singer also makes one. Um, it's an iron-on mending fabric or tape, so just Google that and you'll be able to find it. And just for fun, I was going through my sewing stash and I came across this very old Dritz Fabry Mend, which I believe is the older name for it back when this sold for 35 cents. Um, just a heads up, it's about four to five dollars now, depending on where you buy it. Anyway, um, I have always used the interfacing method and so I did not realize that Dritz had this ready to go, so I ran out and got some, so I can show you two different methods today. Today we are going to be working with the tape because that is going to be the closest shape for the hole in my skirt. I have my skirt turned to the inside, and this is the center front seam, and now I gotta find the hole again. It's somewhere near the center front, so it should be easy to locate. There it is. Okay, so here is my tear. See my finger coming through right there. And it's about an inch long. I want to cut my fabric tape so that it's going to cover um, both of the ends but go past the ends a little bit. So I'm going to cut a strip of tape and then we will move over to the ironing board. So we're back at the ironing board and Hang on to the directions for whichever iron-in mending tape you're using. Um, for the Dritz product, it says to heat your iron for five minutes on the cotton setting. Now, I don't know about you, but most irons these days are automatic shut off. So there's no way your iron is ever gonna get up to a five minute just hanging out hot by itself. So. I'm gonna run mine a little bit onto some fabric and I have to keep going from vertical to horizontal because otherwise it shuts off once it sits for a while. But I don't think it has to be perfectly five minutes. If we need to repress, we will do that. Um, so hang on to your instructions because maybe it's a little different for Singer. I'm gonna put those to the side and I have the um, my skirt ready to go. 
and it's inside out. And I'm going to align the center seam with the hole nearby um, on my ironing board so it's just a single layer. Now what I want to do is um, get the fabric as close to itself as possible and then I'm going to take my little patch and I'm going to place it on top. Let's go in for a closer look. So we're in for a close-up and this is the hole right here and I have cut a little patch um, that's going to be a little bit longer on each side of the tear and I've rounded the corners according to the instructions. The next step is to place the shiny side, so you can kind of see how it's shiny. The sh shiny side is going to go down against the tear and then the more matte side is going to be up to the top. Now, if you have a big hole, they recommended putting a piece of paper under there. So I'm gonna use the instructions and slide that under there, just to be on the safe side. So my fabric is raveling. It's going a little bit closer. I don't know why I can't go in. Okay, I can't go in closer for some strange reason. And um, so we're just gonna push the fabric together and shiny side back down. And there is a piece of cardboard underneath there just in case we need it. Now, next step is to press with the iron into place. Make sure that your iron is set to cotton and that the steam is turned off. So those are additional steps of the uh, instructions on the back. And we're putting this on the inside of the garment because as you can see, it will show and we don't want that happening. So it's set to let it cool about five minutes. And then you wanna check the edges looks like they're staying pretty well. I'll let it cool for a second. And then I'm going to go back over with the iron one more time because this is not a five minute heat up sequence. And I'm just going to run the iron over it again just to be super, super sure that it's hot enough and it's gonna bond. So let's wait five minutes and then we will flip it over see how we did. All right, it's been five minutes, so now we are going to flip my skirt to the right side, and let's see if we can see where we fixed it. Now, when you look at it, here's the center seam, and it was somewhere over in here. There it is. So right here is where we fixed it. The good news is that the tear was on this part of white um, batik, so from the orange to the white. So it's a little bit harder to see. Let me see if I can zoom in now. There we go. So you can see very, very faintly where the white from the mending iron on tape shows through, but it's okay because it's a piece of white through the fabric. So this may not be the ideal method if you were using a dark fabric and the hole would show through more obviously, but for the most part, I think this is a really good fix and it did the job. It'll hold it in place. Um, I'm not gonna wash and wear this a lot. It's kind of a fun summer skirt. Um, so that's the first way that you would fix your hole or tear using the iron and mending tape. As you can see from a distance, you really don't even notice that there was ever a hole or that anything's been fixed and there's a patch on the inside of my skirt, which is good news. The second method to use for mending torn fabric is the iron in, knit interfacing, and hand stitching method. This is iron in, knit interfacing, and as you can see, it's very, very sheer, so you can see me through it. Just compared to another lightweight, non-woven interfacing, so this is a similar weight, but you can see how you can't see through it. Now the whole purpose of using this knit interfacing is to create some stability behind the tear 
and then stitch it and have something to stitch to so that you're you're going to have a line of stitches but you're going to have some reinforcement with the sheer interfacing let's go in for a closer look this is the knit um, interfacing so you can see that it is actually woven there are little knit lines in there it's, it's got a little bit of stretch to it and you can tell the wrong side because the right side is going to be soft but the wrong side is going to be scratchy so the scratchy side is the side that you need to put down against the fabric and then we're going to iron the smooth side from the top now I've cut a piece that is about um, one inch wide about three inches long and this is the tear in the skirt so we want to just double check that it all fits and then it's going to cover the whole thing so that will work and we're going to head over to the ironing board and iron this in as step number one so i'm back at the ironing board and i have not used this type of knit interfacing in a while so while i was at joanne's picking up the iron in mending fabric i checked the directions and the instructions indicate that you should have a damp press cloth to press this interfacing into your fabric. So I just have a piece of muslin. I just ran it under the faucet, wrung it out really well. And so it's damp to use for this process. So the right side of the dress is down with the wrong side facing us. And then we want to take the scratchy side of the interfacing and I'm going to lay that on top of the fabric now this is one of those situations where the fabric's a little bit shredded but i'm not going to sweat about it because i've got this interfacing that i'm going to use to hold the whole thing together and that is going to make the hand stitching work better let's go in for a closer look i have my iron set on polyester and i'm going to take my press cloth and lay it on top of the whole piece of interfacing and then I'm just going to press it down. It is sizzling because the press cloth is damp, but I'm not using any steam on this. We're just using the um, polyester setting and I'm just going to press it, meaning that I'm going to lift the iron up and put it back down, lift the iron up and put it back down. Now, the other bonus of using a press cloth is that if this isn't polyester and it's something um, more fragile like nylon for example um, which would be a lower heat setting the cotton press cloth is helping hold it all together and it will keep the heat from being too intense on the fabric underneath so that's another good reason to use this method if you're not sure what type of fiber your fabric is made out of you can always use a press cloth and keep it protected okay so that's nice and warm and I'm going to lift it up and see how our interfacing has stuck. Looks pretty good. You can check the edges. I think I'm gonna do it one more time just because it's still a little um, loose on the edges. And I'm going to move my press cloth so that we have a new damp area to work with. Grab that iron. I'm just gonna press it and hold it in place and then move it and then move it. Okay, so it's warm now. Let's lift this up. Okay, that looks like that's a nice, tight um, solution. You can see that the fabric is still kind of shredded through here, but we're gonna fix that with some stitches. So let's go. So I have my needle threaded. It is just a knot in a single thread, and it's about an arm's length of Thread. So if I had to hold the spool in my hand and pull the loose end up to my shoulder, that's the length of the thread and it's kind of doubled up, but I'm just have a knot in one. So we're not doing double thickness of thread. This is the front of the garment. You can see how it kind of got chewed up a little bit in the process of being torn, but from the back, it looks pretty good. And we have this nice interfacing that's all in there which is gonna give me some more stability when I start doing a little bit of hand stitching. Now, in theory, you could just stop here. If it's your garment and you just don't care, or if this is good enough, that's awesome. You can totally stop. Um, I'm fixing this for my sister. And since I do not mind hand sewing with a thimble, I'm totally cool to do a little bit more work on this to make it look a little bit better. And then I can trim off some of these loose threads that are kind of looking messy. I have gone from the backside, 
with the knot on the underside and I've come up through the front of the fabric and I'm just going to make some tiny little stitches through here to um, just hold this together a little bit better and to be able to trim out some of these. Now this side doesn't look so bad. Um, I'm still going to put in a few stitches just to make it look a little neater. And I'm just going to go back and forth. And this fabric is very thin, so I don't technically need a thimble, but I just am in the habit of using one. So um, it just makes hand sewing easier. And if you don't know how to use a thimble, head on over to the using a thimble video and learn because it's really going to save your finger and it's not um, too terribly. Oh, that stitch is way too big. So you can see it and it's too big. Um, I'm going to pull this out real quick and we will keep going. So you want to make little stitches. You may need more or less. So I am going to continue stitching until we get to the bigger hole where there is only interfacing and no fabric. And then we will video some more. So I'm going to stitch through here with little stitches and then I'll start recording again once we get down here because it's it's pretty repetitive once you make a whole bunch of these little stitches. Are we coming out the top? Yes. So I finished stitching um, this longer part and you can see the little stitches there but there isn't really much we can do about that. We're not weaving fabric. We're just trying to hold it all together and the interfacing is going to help us with that. So next step is going to be catching this more of this hole and to do that I'm going to sew halfway through the hole and then I'm going to leave a little tiny space and come back out again. So I'm kind of making a double satin stitch which is just a longer stitch um, to kind of start reinforcing this area and then I'm going to go back right next to it from the top. Go about halfway down where that first stitch was. Go through the interfacing as you can see, we're going through the interfacing. I'm going to come back up through the interfacing, but not in the exact same place. I'm going to move down a little tiny bit, and then I'm going to grab the bottom thread down here and go back in. And then I'm just going to repeat this process to kind of patch over this hole. But this is why we need the interfacing, because we need something to attach to to kind of cover it up. So you can see how that's working. And then we're going to go back in right here. And you just keep continuing in this manner until I have to grab my needle. There we go. Until you've kind of closed it up enough so that you've got some stitching closing closing this up through here um, where you have this gaping hole right now. It's going to make it look a little bit better. So as you can see, I've gone across the hole with some longer satin style stitches. It is still going to show there isn't really much we can do about that because the fabric is torn. But it's going to blend a little bit better and it's going to hold everything together which is the important part because we're getting more wear out of our garment. And the funny thing is, is that my sister tore this the first time she wore it. So she only wore it that one time for my grandma's 95th birthday. And then um, it's been in my closet ever since then. But to finish out, I just lost this needle again. So let me just rethread this real quick. It's always worth it to try and save your garments, especially when it's something that's pretty like this is and you know, she really likes it. So I'm fixing it so that she can wear it again, hopefully sooner rather than later. So once you kind of get to the end of the tear, this part down here did fuse a lot better. So I'm not going to stress too much about going over it again, but I am going to finish this out and then I am going to tie a knot on the back of the fabric. And I always use a double knot just to be on the safe side because I don't want it to pull through if there is a little hole there and 
the interfacing has worn out a little bit. So I'm just snip off that thread. Make sure that don't cut the fabric or the knot. So I'll leave that a little long. But now you can see it's fixed. It's not going to be super noticeable at the bottom of the dress. And while it's not perfect, it's certainly cheaper than taking it out to a tailor who would probably not get it perfect either, just because this is one of those hard things when you tear fabric. But it's certainly a lot better, and at the very, very bottom, it's not going to be super noticeable, which is the whole point. Now you know two different ways to mend torn fabric. So the iron-in method is definitely faster, although you have to wait for it to set 30 to 45 minutes, depending on which type you use. And then there is the interfacing and stitching when you don't know what fiber your fabric is made out of. Both of these are going to be pretty permanent. They will stand up to washing and dry cleaning according to the instructions. And hopefully you won't re-tear in the same spot because then if you do, you're going to have some problems. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to click like below and subscribe to my channel so you never miss a stitch. And if you've got questions but no one to answer them, head on over to Let's Talk Sewing for Beginners hosted by SoSo -So Lounge. It's an interactive Facebook group where you can ask all the questions you want and I will get you some answers. I go live in the group on Wednesdays, so check the events tab for the schedule. Until we meet again, happy sewing!